everyone. I'm Ashley Jones from Designs and Machine Embroidery and welcome to this episode of Between Friends. As you guys know, normally Eileen is here, but she just has the day off. So Deborah Jones and I are taking over Facebook Live. So I am so excited about today's episode and I can't wait to share some fun information with you guys. But before we get started, make sure you're telling us in the chat where you are watching from. Say hi to us. Um, tell us what you're hoping to learn today. So we've got uh, some good information, uh, something that's very important to our embroidery success. But I want to hear from you guys where we're watching from. So I see tons of people joining. We've got a couple of people from Arizona. Um, we've got uh, San Antonio, Texas in the house. I see Florida popping up, Tennessee. Thank you guys for joining. So Santa Fe, oh, such a beautiful city. Um, and then I see uh, our um, a friend here, Janet Val says, good morning. She's multitasking at work with her Bluetooth ready. Shh, don't tell her boss. So welcome, welcome. So I'm glad that you guys could join us. Okay, so today, let me tell you our topic. So today we are going to be talking about how you can get your best embroidery ever. So we want to say no to puckering and say yes to that best embroidery ever. So it is so important to choose the right stabilizer and needle for your project. Those are crucial to getting that stitch out that we all long for, the one that's perfect. Um, and so today we are going to um, answer a lot of your stabilizer questions and even that needle selection question. Um, and you'll see tons of samples today as well. Um, and believe it or not, uh, Deborah Jones has some tips on some household items that can be used as stabilizers. So I can't wait. She always has the best information. Um, and speaking of Deborah, so we are talking about the Embroiderer's Compass today. So we've got a fun little game plan to get you guys uh, involved in our Facebook Live today and get all your questions answered. But Deborah invented this tool that answers your question about what stabilizer do I use with what fabric and also what needle. So it is probably my most used tool in my embroidery room. Um, and you guys are going to see why today because it answers all those questions so that I can get that perfect stitch out. But hey, since we've got Deborah with us here today, I would love it if she would join and then tell us all about the Embroiderer's Compass. So Deborah, welcome. It's so good to see you. I always love uh, to visit with you and learn from you, but I really would love if you would share like your your reasoning for in, inventing the Embroiderer's Compass. So, Well, Ashley, it's great to be here, of course. Yeah. I love coming uh, on Facebook Live with you and Eileen. But you know, the Embroiderer's Compass really was born because you know, we just can't remember what gave us those great results the last time we worked with a fabric. You know, sometimes we can because it might have been trial and error, but we don't want to go through trial and error every, every time, time, right? <laughs> and, and you know, I remember when I wrote uh, the book, um, Machine Embroidery on Difficult Materials, and, and for the cover shot, we were doing silk charmeuse, which is a difficult fabric, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's very soft and supple, so I thought, oh, I know, I'll use that soft and supple no-show, you know? And, and it puckered. And then I said, oh, I know what's wrong. I didn't use the fusible no-show, you know? And so I used the fusible, and it still puckered, and I was so disappointed, so I said, you know what, I'm going to go back to basics. And the, one of the basic rules is to use a tearaway with a woven material, which we'll talk more about later. And when I did that, puckering was gone. So I thought, you know, I need a tool to help us remember all these, these uh, stabilizers and when to use them. Because often it's intuitive, but you know, Ashley, there's not just a single stabilizer that will work with any particular fabric. So on the yeah. compass many of the fabrics, there are a couple of choices. 
I, and I love that because um, where I live, Deborah, I don't have a store really close to run out and get an alternate um, if I don't have the right one. So I love that about my compass that you give me more than one option. So um, even if it's one I've done a million times and I'm going to grab for that particular stabilizer because it's tried and true, if I'm out of it, then I need help deciding what to use as an alternative. So I, I love that. That's invaluable information. Well, you know, Ashley, I love the way you you uh, have this planned today so that our viewers can ask what fabric they want to see the stabilizer and needle combination for. So let's yeah, let's jump in. OK, sounds good. So, guys, we have a little game planned, um, a game plan that can be two different things. Right, Deborah? <laughs> I didn't plan that. Um, and so our game that we have planned um, is using the embroiderer's compass. Um, but we want you guys to select the fabric. And so I know that you can't see all of these uh, little numbers. So what I've done is I've put on uh, my slide here um, the fabric options that are on the embroiderer's compass. And I like to call the embroiderer's compass, Deborah, the wheel of success, because that's exactly what it is. So what I want everyone to do is I want you to get your answers about these different fabrics. And so I've numbered them. You can type in the numbers, you can type in uh, the type of fabric. And then if you guys start commenting what you want to learn, how to stabilize and what needle selection to choose from one of these fabrics, then we're going to see which ones get the most comments. And then we'll go from there. And we'll do this several different times. Um, to do. And I see some already popping up, Deborah. So, so far I see a number four for fleece. I see several 16s. You told me that was going to be a big one. That's t-shirts and knits. Um, I even see a 20 for vinyl, um, a 19 for velvet. Keep going, guys. Let's see which one co comes up uh, the most. I see 10. I see 11. So what are those? Quilting cotton and satin. Oh gosh, Deborah, I think they're listing every number. I think we got our work cut out for us. So <laughs> well, well I still, so I'm still seeing 16 the most. So yes. let's start with 16. So hold those numbers for now, guys. And we're going to, uh, we're going to see what the embroiderer's compass says about stitching on t-shirt um, or a knit type fabric. So then let me locate my t-shirt now, this is double sided, as you can see here. So I'm looking on one side. So I have the choice of uh, knit bulky. I'm going to turn this around so Deborah's not upside down. I'm actually looking on the other side. And I also have t shirt um, and a kind of a lightweight knit. So um, the embroiderer's compass says to use no show mesh. Um, for a left chest size uh, lightweight cutaway for a larger design. Now for the needle selection, it says light ballpoint is my best choice. And it is telling me on my side, this is where it tells you the needle. It is telling me um, a 70-10 or a 75-11 uh, would be the best choice for t-shirts. Now, that is what my embroiderer's compass tells me to use since, of course, we've got the luxury of having Deborah here. Deborah's going to elaborate and kind of let us know a little more details, right, Deborah, and maybe some other tips and tricks um, for working with our nets. So what do you got for us, Deborah? Yeah. And, you know, the the T-shirts, it's one of the, and sweatshirts are yeah. things we embroider so commonly. Not you, Ashley, you live in Florida, so you don't do the sweatshirts, right? But the T-shirts for sure. <laughs> but the T-shirts and the baby onesies. I've got a great tip for you on, on both of those. Now, I also have some samples and I'm going to go over to the camera and show you while I'm talking about this. So let's, uh, let's bring uh, the camera view up. And I'm going to show you some of the samples that I brought. Now, you notice that, um, okay, here's a t-shirt. And, and I have a, a golf shirt that's kind of a t-shirt weight. Now, this is a very fully embroidered uh, butterfly. And notice, 
I mean, I don't mean to brag, but there's no puckers. <laughs> <laughs> brag, and, brag, because that's what we all want. And, you know, this is partly because the design's not too dense. I can easily roll it in my fingers. So your design shouldn't feel a lot heavier than your fabric you're applying it to. So that's one thing. Now, look at this, you guys. This is a single layer of no-show. If you don't trust no-show to support a a fully embroidered design, trust me, you can. It will support it and it won't show through. Um, on the other side, I'll show you what I mean. Here's a sample that exemplifies that. Okay, here is a sample I've done. And on this side, let me just make sure. Okay, on this side, I did it with no show. And on this side, I did it with regular cutaway. You see that shadow coming through on this side? Can you I see do. that? We can see that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that's the whole reason we use no show. You don't get that over here on this side. You get it with the regular lightweight cutaway. So the same result, both have fully tracking outlines and detail, look beautiful, but this one has that shadow. Ugh, I don't think any of us really want that. So practice your hooping and you'll be able to get that result as well. Now, the lightweight materials also are on the onesies, aren't they? Uh, this lightweight uh, t-shirt type material. And so here, once again, I have used one layer of the no-show. It doesn't leave any visible shadow around my design on this lightweight knit. This is one of my favorite sayings for craft shows. If you do craft shows, this is a sure seller. My real name is No No, but Grandma calls me precious. That's <laughs> that's <love> always that. <laughs> now I've got three onesies here, Ashley, and they all have one thing in common. And that is they all have set in sleeves. You know why? They're easier to hoop. Those lap yeah. shoulders. Yeah. That's one of the things that causes problems in hooping onesies. I'm just saying. So that is I a great tip. I love that, Deborah. So those set in shoulders where you've got that extra seam. Um, are you saying that uh, because it gets caught in the hoop? Do you, is that the reason? It, that just doesn't, it just doesn't curl up as bad when you're trying to hoop it. It's just a much easier hooping right. process. And of okay. course, here's another, another one with the little butterfly that says itty bitty and Oh, so pretty. And, and this is uh, a one layer again of the no show. I, you know, I'm showing you all these examples. So you'll trust that. So, yeah, does. absolutely. And Deborah, people are asking questions too. So is that the no show or the fusible no show? I think I know the answer. The regular but you no show. Now, if you don't trust your hooping, then use the fusible until you get used to it because it will keep you from stretching your knit as you're putting it in the hoop. That's a mistake and we make. If you stretch that knit when you're putting it in the hoop, it will want to go back to its original location, creating puckers. So that is one contributing cause to puckers is stretching the knit while you're putting it in the hoop. Here's and another what a, good seller at Crash and, and this And this is another uh, a question that kind of relates, Deborah. So do you use sticky or do you baste it? So are you doing any basting or um, at that, well, you know, we just talked about the basting. certainly helps. Basting certainly attaches the face fabric to the backing. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's never a bad thing to baste, but, but it, it's not the best. <laughs> it's not a best solution to use self-adhesive stabilizer like peel and stick on a knit because it's, it, it does require a, um, a cutaway and 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 a very stable cutaway is the nylon uh, no show and and so that's why I love it. On this one, I also applied to the back a layer of the Fuso Soft, and that um, 
protects the baby's skin. But the no-show is so soft, it's it's kind of a <clears throat> just an extra step. It's not totally necessary. But I love that. Those are good tips. We have several questions uh, about this uh, hooping the, the t-shirt. So I've got several uh, different people, but the one that pops up uh, first here was, um, do you need to pre-shrink the no-show stabilizer, Deborah? No, but just remember it is heat sensitive. So don't overheat it after it's been embroidered. So no, you know, super hot dryers dry on medium heat. Uh, you know, some people recommend, you know, ironing their no-show before they put it in the hoop. You can do that. Uh, but if you're not overheating your item, uh, after it's done, that shouldn't really be a factor. Now, and then, uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, go ahead. No, ask away. The Robin uh, Maddox said, how close do you trim the no-show? And this is something that I learned from you. So that's actually a great <laughs> question, right? Yes. You know, uh, you do want to leave about a quarter of an inch uh, around your embroidery so that it has a platform to stand up on. So your embroidery stands up on that little platform. You know, if you ever see embroidery that looks sunken, it's partly because it, or it could be because it was trimmed too close and the embroidery sinks, especially that can happen on a, on a, um, uh, a heavy design. Now right. this shirt, okay, this is more, one of those moisture wicking shirts, which is even more difficult than um, t-shirts yeah. and onesies and very problematic for those of you who've, who have done them. And this one was done with no show. Now this is an example of, of the fact that you can use multiple types. Now I did trim this one a little close. Okay. But it's an eighth to a quarter of an inch is, is good. Now that one was done with no show. This one, I've got three different examples. This one was done with poly pro performance looks similar to no show, but it's a little firmer. So if you haven't tried the poly pro performance, that's another good one for these stretchy knits. And the last one, was and all all of these are really I would consider nice jobs. They are they are pucker free. They don't have a shadow. They they are perfect in their outlining. Okay, so and a pretty stitch intensive design. And this one was done with a woven stabilizer called Stable Sport. Okay, and this is actually. Uh, best on solid designs like this. If I have lettering, I'm going to use Poly Pro Performance or No Show because the woven stabilizers, as you can see, eventually through washing and wearing, washing and wearing, they will weed away. Okay, you see how I'm pulling these strings, Ashley? I do. Yeah. So if you had lettering, obviously that's not a good thing. But on a solid design like this, it gives beautiful, beautiful results. I love that. So Deborah, just to reiterate, so your three technical moisture wicking fabrics was uh, the Poly Pro Performance. You did a no-show um, stabilizer, not the fusible, just regular no-show, correct? And right. Unless, the, yeah, unless you're, yeah, on these samples, correct. And the stretchy knit, right, were the three options there. So if you had all three of those at home, what's your uh, first one that you would grab for? What do you feel like is the, the go-to first? Well, you know, on this particular design, I would use my woven stabilizer, and I'll tell you why. Because, Ashley, think about it like this. I when I'm doing one of these really stretchy materials, I like to imagine that I'm embroidering on the stabilizer and the fabric is just getting in the way. OK, so that. in that case, I'm embroidering on a piece of woven material and this stretchy knit's just getting in the way. So I love that. That's great. a great mindset to keep in mind when you're choosing a stabilizer for these stretchy, stretchy. And a great, knits. Yeah. And a great way to remember, too, you know, like if your your fabric is not as stable, you want to make sure you're picking up the slack kind of right. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Exactly. Love that. Very, and so, very... so some we have tons of questions. So I'm going to grab a couple of them. So we had several people ask about floating or not floating, Deborah. I think I know your response, but you go ahead and and answer <laughs> well, answer yeah. that to float or not to float. <laughs> I never 
well, I almost never speak in absolutes, okay? So I'm not going to say never float because honestly, uh, with some of those technical fabrics, it can actually work because uh, you're not stressing it or stretching it. But um, I'm a hooper. I always hoop. And when it comes to knits, I typically choose a, a two ring traditional hoop, like the kind that come with your machine. But I do love my magnetic hoops for firmer, more stable materials and, and certainly heavy materials, you know, but, uh, for these that we just looked at, I'm a hooper. <laughs> <laughs> and that actually is a question that popped up several times too. So, um, people are saying your standard hoop or your magnetic hoop. And so that answers that question. So thank you. You are a mind reader. Um, <laughs> I think in that case. And so I think, um, most of the rest of them, we have um, answered. Um, this is a question that I have never had somebody ask, Deborah. that's definitely unique. What about, are there any natural fiber stabilizers? Well, that's an interesting question. And yeah. that, uh, that one that I just showed you, uh, that uh, stable sport, I'm in the process of finding out the content of that right now. It's probably a blend, probably cotton and polyester. But I will tell you if... Facebook user, if you have an occasion that you absolutely needed a natural fiber uh, stabilizer, I'm going to tell you a little secret. You could take an old pillowcase, uh, cut it up, and an all 100% cotton, go to the Goodwill store, get 100% cotton pillowcase, cut it up and use that if you wow. really needed a, it to be 100% cotton. There's your first tip, guys, on a household <laughs> item that you can use for stabilizer. Deborah, I don't think I've heard that one before. You may have said it and I missed it, but I love that one. And so here's another really good question that we get often. And I always love your response to this question. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to say it again. And that is, is there a chart that shows the number of stitches per type of fabric? Um, which is unusual because normally people ask that about the stabilizer. And so Dorothy wants to know if you have a rule of thumb for the number of stitches on the fabric. Well, you know, that's why, Dorothy, that we have light, medium, heavy in most of our stabilizers, you know. So, uh -huh. so really, I don't assign a stitch count to it because look, you could have a, a bowling ball that's 10,000 stitches, or you could have a Christmas tree that's fully decorated that's 10,000 stitches. So it has for me to do with the amount of detail and that sort of thing. But I will say your stabilizer probably shouldn't be a lot heavier than your face fabric. And you want to equate the stitch count to the weight. So if it's right. a light design, choose a light. If it's a heavier design, like if you've got a running stitch design, obviously you're going to use a, a lightweight tearaway, right? But but if you when it gets more complicated than that, evaluate that design and say, no, this is kind of a medium stitch count. I'll use a medium cutaway, you know. I and, love that. That and Deborah, that actually brings up a good point that you and I have talked about before as well. So if I have to stitch on something that's a lower stitch count and I really want to use this design that has too many stitches, what do I do? Well, sometimes you can eliminate some of those stitches, Ashley. You know, I've got an example over here I'll show you. Let me just show you a, an example okay. of that under the camera. So, you know, that butterfly that I showed you on the t-shirt, uh, here, I'll show it to you again. Uh, this butterfly, okay, has a lot of fill in it. It's got, it's completely embroidered. That's a fully embroidered design. But here's that same butterfly without all that fill. And that is a great solution for a lot of designs. You'd be surprised how many designs you can just take the fill out of and, uh, uh, you get this better result. Now, I'm going to tell you while we're over here looking at this nylon jacket, actually, this is polyester, but same would work for nylon. Uh, these dense, heavy, um, how should I call it, uh, high thread count, tough synthetic fibers, that's the way I would put it. They need a sharp needle, Ashley. And yeah, that's that. what the compass is going to tell you on a nylon or polyester uh, 
uh, fabric, it's going to tell you to use a sharp needle. And that's the reason we get this, this result. In fact, woven materials are, um, are best for, um, with, with sharp needles, because if you think of it, you guys, if you're trying to pierce this, uh, how did I call it? High thread count, uh, tough synthetic fiber. Then you want to do that with a sharp point, not a more rounded point, which is just going to th- imagine it like bouncing off of this, <laughs> which it doesn't, <laughs> of course, but, but that's a good mental image, right, Ashley? It is definitely a good mental image. So, and for editing a design, so lucky for us, Deborah, we have the best uh, embroidery software on the market. It makes it easy for editing. And so, so for your butterfly, I actually have an example that I'll show on my screen here. I'm inside of my embroidery tool shed, but I'm using features from my Word Art and Stitches. But you can also do this um, with any of our software that will allow you to ungroup. So I have the group and ungroup feature. And so here's what Deborah uh, did to lower her stitch count. This is the easiest thing ever. Um, but we ungroup the design in our software, and that allows us to see the individual pieces over here. And then and um, we can just delete some of those fills. So if I delete this one and say um, this one, then we've got a much airy open design. If I want to leave the green outline, I could maybe, you know, delete a little more of the blue somewhere. So if I press the delete key there, that got a little bit of the, the fill here uh, removed too. So Deborah, do you think that's a good sto- choice for reducing yes, those absolutely. stitches? And you know, Ashley, uh, I love my Word Art and Stitches software. It's it's my one of my go-to softwares. But you know, if you don't use software, if it's not your thing, you can just not sew those stitches at the machine, right, Ashley? Right. Uh, that's a very good point. Yeah. I always feel like I edit in my software just because I'm a software junkie. I love <laughs> playing my software and sometimes never even taking the stitch. But yeah, that's a good point. So if you've got a big fill area um, at your embroidery machine, you just don't stitch it. Just move on to the next thread color. I love that. Deborah, you're you full know, of them. Y- you know, knowledge. Ashley, I see a, a, a question of uh, about at the design on my jacket. And so uh, uh, what stabilizer was used? And yes. this is one of my, uh, in fact, it's, uh, I think uh, Donna says, how do you put a design? How did you put a design? Oh, no, this is a different, this is a different question. Uh, but that is a good question. Uh, sometimes, and I'll answer this one just real quickly, because okay. you can, uh, you can get oh, jackets. Uh, th- th- I mean, you can undo the lining, of course, if you don't absolutely don't want it to show. But check this out, Ashley. This is uh, from Port Authority. Uh, and look, it's got a zipper inside it that lets me oh unzip God. it and put the hoop in. OK, and so I'm just hooping this single layer. Uh, but sometimes you want that extra layer. Like, well, think about a leather jacket. Uh, yeah. Leather it's stretchy. So uh, a woven or a cutaway stabilizer is always great with leather. So it would be great to um, uh, sew through that lining because that yeah. acts like a, 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 a cutaway stabilizer, Layer. even though you're I not love cut it away, right? Okay, I here's the that. question I had seen from Mona. And it's, did you embroider your design on your sweater with that same stabilizer? No, Mona, this is what I did. And I, I really, this is a bulky, stretchy, crepey knit, really a difficult uh, challenge, I, I believe. But I used a matching uh, polyester organza. Okay. So another, another variation to stabilizer. I love it, Deborah. Right. So, you know, it's a, that's an old timey uh, monogram operator, you know, people that did this manually. That's what a lot of them use because back in the old days, we didn't have engineered uh, embroidery stabilizers, but that is one for these bulky knits. And I'll tell you why, because this green sweater I don't want a white stabilizer behind it because look, you can see through this sweater. Okay. So I used a, a, a matching green polyester organza and it, that. 
it works beautifully. Yeah. I love that. You're just, you know, we need all of this, Deborah. I mean, like this is just the tip of the iceberg, it sounds like, <laughs> but this <laughs> definitely is the tool. So what do you say we choose uh, another item to talk about? That actually led, those questions actually led us into, we talked about t-shirt knits. We did, um, what else? The onesie on here. Um, and then you also went over the nylon on the jacket as well, right? And so right. no, we covered long, yeah. lots of the, and you even covered uh, on your sweater there, um, a sweater knit, which is another variation. So um, you guys, if you're just joining, we're playing uh, this game with the wheel of success. We want you to put in a number in the chat. What's the next thing that you want to learn to stabilize properly and hear all of Deborah's tips and tricks. So start those numbers going. So Carolyn uh, started with a number two on denim. Uh, so, so yeah. So what else is everybody want to see whichever numbers I see the most of will go with next so I see velvet I see um, gauze that's unusual um, and so oh my gosh they're all over the place this time Deborah terry cloth um, another a quilting cotton um, oh, let's do quilting cotton Ashley because I want to show you something under the camera but okay a very and, and I, I love all of these, I do, because yeah. they're all great. But I think it, quilting cotton is one that a lot of people struggle with because today a lot of people want to put machine embroidery on their quilts and yeah. not just quilting designs. You know, maybe they want to quilt around an embroidery design, you know. So so I want to show you now I don't have a quilt, but I'm going to show you some embroidery on very similar fabrics and even a sheer. So I'm going to go back over under the camera and I'm going to grab a couple of samples. Now this is probably the closest thing I have to a quilting cotton because it's just a lightweight uh, cotton dish cloth, right? And it's so lightweight, you can you can really, you know, kind of see through it. So, the, in fact, I bet you can see those stripes. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, I can see okay. the mat. So, so this is a, a very full coverage design. Now, this was done with a crisp, or firm, some people call it, tear away. You can even see a little bit of it left in there. I could get that out. But tear away is going to give you your best results on most wovens. You know, people say if you wear it, don't tear it. Well, that would be true of knits. But when it comes to wovens, not so much. Here's, a, here's an example of a wearable woven. Another fabric similar to uh, the weight and makeup of a quilting cotton. And look how cool it looks with the tearaway. There's absolutely nothing left. Same thing, those of you who ask for towels, I saw a few did, same mm -hmm. thing. Just a crisp tearaway is gonna give you a beautiful result and nothing uh, left on the reverse. Now, I love that. And so, and um, uh, Mary uh, Camp DeSantis says, uh, what about stabilizer on quilt blocks? So this applies also, Deborah, because we're generally um, creating quilt blocks with quilting cotton, correct? Correct. So, you know, I would again recommend for your actual stabilizer, a firm or crisp tearaway. However, uh, if you want to add some body to that quilt square before you embroider it or quilt fabric before you embroider it, you can always iron on some uh, a, a stabilizer to the back, like a like a fuse so soft actually, and if for that matter, fuse so soft works great on ravelly fabrics, uh, woven fabrics like silk dupioni. Uh, and you can, you know, we think of putting that on after the embroidery, Ashley, yeah. but uh, put it on beforehand, and it adds body and it controls the the fabric. I love so that. this is another lightweight woven sample. This happens to be just a plain cotton hand handkerchief, similar to a, a, a quilting cotton, even a little bit lighter. And on these sheer fabrics that you can actually see through, I don't want to use a firm tear weight, even though they would work, but then you're going to see them through the embroidery. And I don't want to have to pick it out of all these little areas. Uh, so in that case, I use an invisible stabilizer, and that's the sew and heat. 
because you can just tear it away. And Ashley, I don't know if you can see that little shiny bit of it left on the back. Yeah, when it? the light hits it, Deborah, yeah, yeah you can see, I see it. it. I see it showing. That is a little bit of the uh, sewing heat remaining because you have to actually touch it with your iron, okay? But um, it doesn't show on the front. <laughs> so you just tear away the big pieces run an iron over it and fold it up and put it in the box. It's ready to go. And for those of you who don't know what I mean by a crisp tearaway, there's two kinds of tearaway, crisp and soft. And the crisp is the kind that tears away so that you don't, uh, it, it tears away very cleanly. You don't see any little ragged, fuzzy edges. Now the soft tearaway I love, when you see the fuzzy edges, that's because it has longer fibers in there that, uh, help support heavier designs. So uh, I like them both, but um, that is, uh, the, the you know, between, what, yeah, the two. Yeah, and so like, then in that, in that case, Deborah, would you say that the soft tearaway is slightly more supportive? So absolutely. It's okay. actually a hybrid, Ashley, between tearaway and cutaway. Love that. I yeah. love it. And so a couple of other uh, questions um, that we had um, that, that popped up. And so someone had mentioned um, the software uh, installing on Mac. I'm trying to go back to find that. The comments are flying so fast. Um, and yes, the answer is yes, you can install our software on a um, PC or a Mac. You do need the full operating system so it doesn't work on an iPad. But yes, if you've got your uh, Mac OS, you can use uh, any of the dynamic software directly. Actually, Ashley, Mac. you can install it on both, right? If you yeah. got a PC and a Mac, we let you have those two installations. So that, is, you can do that both. is so true. Yes, so true. So um so yeah that question I saw pop up and then this one's not really related to stabilizer, but as we are about ready to choose another substrate, um we can look at the list again. We had a couple of people ask what my asterisk meant, Deborah, on my list. Um <laughs> you guys were not supposed to notice that. And so that was just really a visual for me um, because I knew that these were samples that Deborah had uh, brought. And so that was kind of the reminder that she had those to talk about. But, you know, she can give you tips on any of these. Obviously, we've talked about uh, them already. But um, I just knew she had samples that she could show you under the camera of those. So Deborah, what do you say? You want to do another one? Well, you know, there's one that's near and dear to my heart, Ashley. And and that is, and, and I don't know if people, uh, uh, Yes, crisp tearaway is the same as firm tearaway, by the right. way, uh, on the compass. Um, the, uh, you know, there's several on here that I know people are asking about, like uh, terry cloth. Of course, terry cloth is going to work great with uh, just a crisp or firm tearaway or a tearaway washaway. And I know on the compass, uh, I think it gives you both those options. Uh, and tearaway washaway is just a tearaway that gradually disintegrates through the laundry and we love it on on linens and that sort of thing uh you know we didn't even talk about adhesive sew and wash ashley which wow. is a, also a great option for linens like terry cloth uh, uh, placemats uh, napkins because you just can stick them down and stitch them and then there's literally no no residue remaining when you're when you're finished i i have uh, used it quite a bit on uh, all kinds of fabrics and even your knits. You know, if you don't want to use a peel and stick because it's a tear away, a good option is the adhesive sew and wash because I've done knit caps on it that came out beautifully and a lot of, uh, you know, pretty unstable materials that, yeah. that did just fine. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I just think that terry cloth is a really easy one. And I love the idea that you just gave everyone that's been stitching with tear away stabilizer on their terry cloth, another option because they don't, you know, so many people want the back of their embroidery to look just as good as the front. And Deborah, I know you hear this um, too, just as much as I do. And so they want that stabilizer to be completely gone. Um, and so using that adhesive sew and wash, you've got the adhesive component, but it completely disappears. Now, Deborah, before we do one more uh, fabric type, tell me 
when would you not use the adhesive sewing wash? What type of fabric would you not recommend using adhesive sewing well, wash on? Really, the only one for a while I was doing everything, not everything, but a lot of yeah. things with it, you know, shoes, all kinds of stuff. So really the only thing would be a water sensitive uh, material or a lined yeah. item. Obviously you can't, you know, it's you can't layer. stick the top layer to the stabilizer. You, if it's something you could baste, maybe, but what's the point? <laughs> you need to stick it a, a directly to right. the adhesive so and I love I love that and that's an awesome stable I love that it disappears completely so um so let's play um our will of success one more time okay, before we let's go play. on to the next part so we can get some more information and then I'll kind of go through and kind of give some honorable mentions because you actually just went over terry cloth we've done t-shirt we've done tech fabric uh we did sweatshirt along the way nylon onesie quilt cotton we've actually covered a ton of this so guys type in the chat what's the next Next one that you want to see. Let me see those numbers. What fabric uh, do you want to hear Deborah uh, give those tips on? So I'm seeing four, uh, 19. Um, I saw 20 a few minutes ago. So the 20 actually, Deborah, keeps coming up. So yeah. maybe we talk okay, about that talk one. Yeah. yeah. So, and, yeah. Can, so yeah. vinyl is number 20. And the embroiderer's compass guy says soft tear away um, mm -hmm. or medium weight cut away with a higher stitch count. Um, and for the needle choice, for vinyl, um, Deborah recommends a 7010 or 7511 in a ballpoint or a sharp. Now, Deborah, that's actually a great one for you to kind of explain why yeah. you would give a recommendation for both a sharp and a light ballpoint on yeah. the needle as well. So take it away on the vinyl. Okay, so vinyl, you know, is subject to perforation, obviously. And, and also, by the way, some vinyl won't uh, when you put it on uh, an, a self-adhesive stabilizer like peel and stick, it won't come off. So <laughs> beware of that. You know, if you're doing the inside of a bag or something, uh, mm -hmm. test first because it won't always release. Uh, but the the uh, the needle is an interesting uh, subject because yeah. your needle has a footprint, and so start out with a sharp because it has the smallest footprint. But if when when it uh, the needle is trying to escape the vinyl on its upstroke, if it cannot escape and it's breaking your thread, that's your indication to go to a light ballpoint. See, it's wow. just that simple because leather's the same way. It, leather is best with a small footprint being a sharp and if your uh, thread can't escape because the hole isn't big enough and that leather is spongy and it's closing up around it then switch to a light ball point. It's just, it's just who, as simple as that. Who would have thought that our needles, um, they are very technical. That's why we have all of these uh, choices. But Deborah, I love that. I love all the technical information that you give because I think it makes us all think a little deeper um, so that if you don't have something written, you just kind of use the things that you know about what's happening with your fabric and your needle to make your first best choice uh, if it's not something written, right? Um, and then since we uh, have a little bit of time left, maybe we do some honorable uh, mentions here that maybe we could just verbally talk about. And sure. so uh, someone said 14 socks, which oh. is uh, yeah. an interesting one. So if yeah. you want to um, a, talk fact, about- Let me just grab my, I'm going to grab yeah. my, I'll be right back. I'm just going to okay, grab sure, my- sure. I'm just going to grab And so grab on my... the socks, while she's grabbing that, I'll tell you what the embroiderer's compass says. It says to use adhesive sew and wash, which Deborah mentioned, that's an adhesive that completely dissolves or a peel and stick, which is a tear away adhesive stabilizer with a water soluble topper on top. So- Deborah, yeah. take it away. Yeah. What else yeah. do you have to say so about socks? Here's, here's a little sock, okay, with a with a wing uh, design. Lots of outlining. Definitely needs to be uh, held without perforation. So this design, I would use adhesive sew and wash on. And, and it's great because if it was the type of sock where it touches the skin, you know, that adhesive sew and wash yeah, doesn't leave really doesn't anything. Matter. And this is just one of my, you know, uh, favorite stabilizers for, th and you can see that it doesn't, the sock isn't stressed or stretched because it's adhered during the embroidery process. So I love it for socks, but 
Uh, if you had a simple design that has no outlining, peel and stick can work just as well, being a tearaway. But uh, the adhesive sewing wash would be my number one go-to for sure. I, I absolutely love that. And so um, people are still typing in numbers. Deborah, I think that they love it. Though, first of all, it's always good to learn. Do you have any uh, quick information that you can share with us on uh, satin or velvet? That's yes. another number that kept popping up. Okay. Well, two different topics, but we'll talk yep. about both of them. Uh, satin is, this is an interesting fun fact, people. Satin is the one, um, one of two, only two instances that I know of, that I can think of, where you don't use the same needle to embroider as you use to construct a garment. So satin in, um, in construction, uh, you know, you would want to use a, um, a sharp needle uh, mm -hmm. because it's a woven and you want that straight, beautiful seam. But if you embroider <clears throat> with a sharp, uh, you are going to uh, cut it to pieces because it's, it's, a, it's too much, too many close needle penetrations. So the other is, so I would recommend a light ballpoint needle ballpoint. for, uh, satin. for satin, right? Yeah. Now you could even, it, the lightest ballpoint needle is actually a, a uh, microtex type needle for microfibers. So you could even try that on your satins. The other thing is the um, leather. When you're embroidering leather, Many people recommend leather needles, but they are not correct for embroidering leather because oh, they have cutting points and they make big giant footprints in the leather to help make that straight seam. And you don't want big giant needle holes when you're putting a lot of stitches uh, in a close space in your leather. I love that. Those are great tips. So then Alice uh, Stringer Brown says, uh, or Stinger Brown wants to know if you could explain what you mean by light ballpoint needles. Absolutely, needle. Alice. You know, you know, can you tell needles are one of my favorite subjects? <laughs> right. When we buy embroidery needles, they are light ballpoints. Uh, so you're good, you know, when I say light ballpoint on the wheel. But let me tell you that, uh, there are also, you go to the store and buy sewing needles. You'll see jersey needles. You'll see uh, different types of ballpoints. And there are uh, light, medium, and heavy ballpoints. Light are for embroidering uh, or sewing lightweight knits made out of lightweight yarns because the size of the ball, which it's not really a ball, is it? It's just a no. kind of a, blunt, a rounded point. The size of the ball is designed for the size of yarn it's pushing out of the way because oh. we aren't trying to cut it. We're trying to push it out of the way. So a medium ballpoint is for technically heavier yarns, uh, like maybe sweatshirts or sweaters like this. And a heavy ballpoint is for elastic materials because you don't want to cut through that elastic, right? right. So, I love so that. Tech, if you're going to get real technical, that's the difference. But generally in embroidery, we use light ballpoints. I love that. That's a great explanation. We have so many people that are loving uh, the presentation to Deborah and uh, creative appliques. I actually love your designs. Thank you for joining. So it says uh, we've learned so much. Thank you for sharing your knowledge, Ashley and Deborah. And we've had people say that they have the compass. They love it. Uh, someone said they just joined 20 minutes ago and they've learned so much already. <laughs> and so just uh, tons of people that I think are enjoying the presentation, Deborah. And I agree. This is um People don't think stabilizer and needles are a fun topic, but if you make it fun um, and learn, then your embroidery is going to really uh, benefit from it, wouldn't you say? Yes, absolutely. And, you know, you can you can certainly rewatch this after it's concluded uh, very shortly after we're, we're finished here. And I wish we had, you know, hours to talk about right. this because it is a very deep <laughs> subject, but it's a lot of fun. And here at Dime, we, we're always about the education. So Absolutely. if you have a specific question, we'll always try to, to get it answered. I, I see a question that. on the screen. Yes, actually. from our friend Joanne Banco has joined us today. Yeah, she says, do you recommend low density design for satin, Deborah? <laughs> well, you know, I do, Joanne, but it's <laughs> sort of like what you have to do. Like when, when my niece asked me to do her 
graduation stole, her satin graduation stole uh, the day before the ceremony. I had to do what I had to do, you know, but I will tell you that, uh, you know, I did their school mascot and, and, and mostly it's lettering on those. But, but yes, the lighter density, for example, on the lettering um, is better than a heavier density. So where you have software, Ashley, and you can make that a, a four point density instead of a three point density, that's very helpful. Yeah, for sure. I love that. Another great tip as well. So, well, Deborah, we are getting a little low on time. So um, I uh, still want to share with them the on the house. And especially since you're here and you're part of the brains behind that program, I wanted to make sure they got to hear from you on that. Um, but if it's okay with you, I just wanted to remind everybody, because a lot of people are saying how much they love this um, presentation and learn so much. If you like this and you want to make sure you're notified that you are, um, that we're doing a Facebook Live. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and also follow us on Facebook so you'll be notified. Um, and we do have a short video that we can share with you of um, exactly how you would uh, go about that. So let's see this video of how to make sure you're following and subscribing to us. We want to make sure you are being notified every time we go live on Thursdays at 1 p.m. And here's a quick tutorial on how you can set up your live notifications. First, on your home page, click on the search button. Look for us. Click on the three little dots on our page. A pop-up will appear. Select on Manage Follow Settings. Click on Live Videos and Enable Notifications. Make sure they're all set to all. Now you're all set. We I love that. Um, do we want to watch the one of how to subscribe on mobile as well? I don't know if that was mobile or maybe that. We want that... to make sure you are being notified every time we go live on Thursdays at 1 p.m. And here's a quick tutorial on how you can set up your live notifications. First, on your home page, click on the search button. Look for us. Click on the three little dots on our page. A pop-up will appear. Select on manage follow settings. Click on live videos and enable notifications. Make sure they're all set to all. Now you're all set. Love that. Okay, so you guys know that each Facebook Live Between Friends episode, um, we have a product that is kind of our sponsor or our special product. So we do have the Embroiderer's Compass on a very special price today. And I think they figured out, Deborah, that they're not going to be able to live without it after today. So because <laughs> we didn't get to go through every single option on here, but you see now how helpful this is. So if you don't already have one, get your Embroiderer's Compass while it's on special. Um, so now I wanted to share with everyone um, our new On the House program. So if you're not familiar with our On the House program, it's a free weekly design. And on the last week of the month, we actually have a project that goes along with the design. Now, these designs are limited time, meaning that once we've released them for the year, they go away. So if you want to make sure to take advantage of these free designs, get them while they are posted. So when you see them, download it so that you don't miss it. Now, um, we love to see your um, projects that you make with these designs. So once you download your on the house design from our website, dzgns.com. Um, you can go to the free designs and then make sure you share your project on Facebook with the hashtag Dime Sew Along on the house or exquisite thread, any of and all of those. Um, and then make sure that post is uh, searchable or sh that you are it's able to be shared. So that allows us to find those projects. Now, last week, Eileen introduced the La La Llama, and I just love to say that, um, but it is so cute. It is an applique, so um, Deborah used uh, wool felt, right, Deborah, or was it um, uh, just a yes, fleece or was, something? It was actually wool felt. I prefer I wool felt when I can get it, yeah. Yeah, I love it turned out so cute. We love that. So that was the free design last week. Don't forget to get that. But this week, Deborah, tell us about this gorgeous text. I think this is the cutest uh, Happy Valentine's Day text I've ever seen. It, I love it because those little heart flourishes really uh, are are wonderful uh, little accent. And the script itself is just beautiful. And it overlocks 
overlaps, they're intertwines really beautifully. So this is a nice, you know, it's a size, Ashley, that could be put on a card. So uh, that would be a nice way to stitch it uh, and, and to uh, remember Valentine's Day. And I did it in the uh, red metallic King Star. So it stitched great with that metallic thread. I love it. Yeah. And our metallic thread is so easy to use. So if you haven't played with the King Star, you definitely are going to want to do that. That's the, the uh, best stitching uh, metallic thread on the market. So, and next week, Eileen will be back um, in the house. So you guys will see her uh, next week. So make sure to join her as well. Uh, don't forget to get your uh, free designs while they're available. Right, Deborah? So anything else right. we want to add before we sign off? I think I think we're good, Ashley, and I really enjoyed uh, doing this with you today and and look forward to, you know, uh, being here again later on in the later on in the year because we have lots more great information to share. I, I agree with you. And I do enjoy being here um, uh, with all of you as well. And certainly, Deborah, I learned something from you every single time. That pillowcase, that got me today. So I love that. Well, thanks, everyone, for being with Deborah and I on Between Friends today. We're so glad that you joined us. Um, and we'll see you next time we get to host Facebook Live. <laughs>